Uh, now we can get into how to actually make it work for us, how to use it. The box, knowing the limitations, knowing all of the factors going into it, how do we make it work for us, for our applications? And that's where we get into using Vox. So mm -hmm. as we mentioned before, Vox works best with the headsets and earpieces equipped for the, uh, with mics that are Vox capable. And, um, you know, as you just mentioned, Danny, uh, Boom Microphone is probably the best uh, use of this. And this you is to help kind of make mitigate. sure that you're using – your application is an application that's a good – uh, application for Vox. Mm -hmm. That's important too. Construction With, site, uh, you don't even try, right? Yeah. So I mean, a it, high it, noise it, environment. If you're working in a, a manufacturing facility, and attached to the get, hip, give it up. <laughs> just don't, don't, don't try to do it when it's just attached to the hip. And you're walking around. It just doesn't work well uh, because any noise at all um, caused by something around you is going to activate that Vox feature. Because it can be activated by any extraneous noise mm -hmm. at all, you could have some issues with the FCC rules in that respect. Say, for instance, if you're if you're in a loud environment and they're playing a lot of loud music or something like that, which you're really not supposed to transmit music on the radio, for instance, and uh, and you're trying to use Vox in that environment, that could be a problem. You're actually violating the FCC rules doing that. There are other scenarios where that could be the case as well, but I, I use the music because that's that's the more obvious one. Mm -hmm. But um, there are certain situations, certain scenarios where if there are other noises that that you're not supposed to be transmitting, you know, like uh, retransmitting a radio broadcast. Let's say, for instance, in your car and you've got Vox a activating your car and you're playing the 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 commercial radio in your car and they're playing some news program or the you know or music or something and you're and that's getting picked up and sent out over the over the uh, the radio your radios that's uh that's a problem there so those are all things to consider if, if I bring my GMRS radio to a party I have vox mode activated and I leave it sitting on a table accidentally because I have to go do something else mm -hmm. right and it picks up a conversation between a couple of other people that are standing near the radio they don't realize it, but they're transmitting. Are they in violation of the FCC rules for transmitting without a license? Mm. Or is that on me for leaving the That's radio? That's a good there? question. That's a very good Would question. Would you put them in jail? Yes or no? Well, I wouldn't put them in jail. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm just saying, yeah. Uh, would it, it would could, you fine them? Well, the thing is, if you're the the operator of the radio and other people are, are accidentally transmitting and you, you're not present controlling the radio, um, that does violate your your license and actually does uh, it's a violation of, of the terms of your license for it for you know i mean if it's a license frequency and you know, we're talking about license frequencies here like ham or gmrs i, I don't I, know i that, wonder where that the line be an is issue anywhere else if i handed this other person the radio and they pushed the button and talked into it mm -hmm. they're clearly responsible in that case and they would be on the hook for transmitting without a license mm -hmm. but if I left the radio unattended, it seems like it should come back on me. I wonder if the rules are written in a way that it would be on me. The FCC rules aside, potential violations of the FCC rules aside, there's also a, a rule about privacy and eavesdropping too. Because what if, let's say, for instance, in your same scenario, you leave it on the table, walk away, and other people nearby the radio don't even know it's on, and they're having a private conversation between the two of them. That's not intended to be heard any by anyone else, and say someone well, else is listening and picks up on that. Oh, um, well, it is certainly that's a liability a, issue. Yeah, it's a that certainly a social faux pas that would be on me for leaving the radio there that exposed a private conversation. Could be a legal right? one too if if whoever's listening and and uh, you know if they know the people or whatever and it gets back or the people find out that that was transmitted around and and then they get back to you and they say, hey, you know. Uh, you were recording us, you know, does that, vo you know, does that violate wiretapping laws? Things like that. I mean, it, there, there are liability questions there. No, I, I, I got a great title for this episode. <laughs> Use Vox, go to jail. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, all that aside, 
uh, knowing the rules, knowing the risks and the li- potential liabilities and, and everything else. We, we were else. talking Let's, about sensitivity, like yeah. I mean, the and using Vox. The, the main thing is to to get your sensitivity right. Mm-hmm. Isn't that yeah. where we were going? Yeah. Like, and that just takes a lot of trial and error. It's going to be try level one, try level two. Mm-hmm. Then you've got to figure out where does my voice need to be to activate this consistently. And that's where we're getting into how to activate Vox, how to do it properly. So, um, I mean, the first of all, that feature needs to be enabled in the radio because some people, they, I've had questions from people that say, hey, you know, I can't get Vox to work on my radio. Well, what are you doing? I turn on the radio. I don't know how to activate this. You need to go into your menu, the menu of your radio, and set the, you know, activate Vox. <laughs> set it to yes or no or whatever. You have to activate it. If it's not activated, it's not going to work. You know, the, the good um, news is, as bad of, bad of an acronym as Vox is, it, it is pretty consistent throughout the radio world. That's true. If you have a, a menu on your radio, it's probably going to be called Vox. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, uh, but that, it, that is consistent. I, it's amazing to me how some people can say, how do I activate Vox? Well, um, do you have your radio manual? Yes. You have your main radio manual right there. Yes. Okay. Well, turn to the section on Vox. Oh, it's in the manual. <laughs> Sometimes it pays to read the manual. And, and it's not complicated. That's the thing. Now, you said it does take some experimentation to get the right levels, to get everything working yeah, right. Yeah, you, you've got to try level one. You've got to try level two. You've got to, you know, you've got to get um, – you've got to dial it in. Yeah, but first of all, you need to to activate it so you can try the level. So that's once yeah. you get over that hurdle, semantics. <laughs> once you get over that that hurdle, the rest of it is uh, not too bad. Now, most CB radios and MERS radios and FRS consumer radios um, that have a Vox feature, and a lot of them do. Um, you can usually do this directly from the menu and the radio itself. Um, not too big of a deal. And consult the manual if you do it. Most ham GMRS handhelds on the market today uh, allow you to do it either from the menu of the radio or through programming software. So you can go into, if, if you can't work it out through the menu, you or if you're in the programming software and you're programming your radio from there, you can just go into the programming software and usually activate it that way too. Now, it's a little more tricky when you're doing it through programming software because when you're setting Vox levels, you can't really test you can't really test the Vox levels until you've sent that program to the radio and then play around with it there. So, you know, a good deal of the time, it's just best to do it through the menu. Of the radio itself. One thing that can cause people to stumble is the Vox switch on the headset. Mm-hmm. Like um, I can see if you have a Vox capable headset and you've got the Vox switch turned on, you can assume that you're in Vox mode. Yeah. Because you've turned a switch on, but you also need to activate Vox on the radio as well as the headset. In most cases. That's true. That's true. I, yeah. Some people I think have made that assumption. As well, oh, I'll just flip this little switch and it's on. Yeah, it's and, not. and it should work. But it, in yeah. most of the time, it's not. I think there are maybe a few headsets out there that have really advanced Vox capability, and they they handle all the Vox circuitry. There is one caveat to um, the programming, and that is the business radios. The business radios, um, most of the time, if not always, you have to set you have to set a Vox in the programming software. Can you- I think it depends on the models. Like some of those um, CLS series from Motorola, I'm mm-hmm. thinking that that's in the radio menu. Could be. Thing. But I, I know I've seen somewhere that like the only way to set it up is you kind of have like either you have to set up in the programming software or you have to have it programmed. If you're having it programmed for you, you have to Definitely set it up. Definitely with like the, the radios that don't have a display. Like a lot yeah, of business yeah. radios, they, they want them to be as simple as possible. So if you don't have a screen and you don't have many buttons. So – there is going to be some testing that's required to get the level, you know, where you want it to be to make Vox work for you. Um, and, of course, once again, read the manual. Read the manual. It's it's going to help you a lot. Um, now, there is one other item that we haven't really mentioned yet. There is kind of a sub-feature with Vox that uh, some radios have. Not all radios, but certain radios. Uh, and it's called Vox Delay. I'll let you take that, Dan. Uh, well, Vox <laughs> Delay is... Um, that's the feature that lets you decide how long to wait 
after the radio stops detecting sound before it cuts off the transmission, right? Like if mm -hmm. you're uh, a, the type of speaker that pauses for a second or two in between your words, you may want to set Vox delay to a, a second or so just so that it doesn't cut off yeah. and then have to start transmitting again if you're still talking. Um, that is an important feature to set if, if you have that feature available in your radio. But that brings us to actually how to use Vox in action. Um, it's not just a matter of simply talking to the radio and everything's going to be heard. There's a little bit of a delay at the beginning, too, because the Vox circuitry has to first pick up the sound of your voice. It has to first detect that you're speaking before it actually opens up and sends sends uh, your transmission off, which means that there can be a second or two. Uh, some, it depends on how quick it reacts, the reaction time for Vox. Uh, there can be uh, a couple of seconds between the time you start talking and the, the time that it starts transmitting. And what that can do is that can cause uh, the first part of your transmission to be cut off. But uh, there is I, there's a common fix for that. I think most people do. It's a, a quick fix. I think you wanted to mention that, didn't you? What's the quick? Uh, I don't <laughs> want to. Make, what is what is the quick fix? Oh, the quick fix is a common practice when you're using Vox to uh, do a couple of things to actually you know make a noise first before you start transmitting. You know, it could be a couple of pops or it could be a slight whistle, it could be a, you know, uh, you could say a couple of words before you start, or you could repeat the first few words when you're starting off, you know, just say, hey, this is, this is, you know, and then, and then give your call sign or whatever. You, you repeat the this is part to give the Vox circuit a chance to open up and say, oh, okay, he's going to talk now. And then we'll send that off. So that way you don't worry too much. If you, if you give some sort of a preamble one or two seconds of noises or, or, or speech before you actually are going to say what you're going to say, that ensures that your entire speech will get through. So in summary, uh, when it comes down to Vox, with the right equipment and the right configuration in its optimal setting, Vox can be a viable solution for some hands-free communications. However, it's not a panacea for for every application or situation. It's just not built for some of those things, uh, particularly certain specialized applications that you think, hey, you know, maybe this would be a great use for. I mean, you can experiment uh, if you want, but um, the, the results are not guaranteed. <laughs> they yeah, are not. I think that's a good summary. I, I, I'll just echo that. Uh, Vox is a feature you'll find on most all two-way radios, even down to, you know, very inexpensive FRS radios. But mm -hmm. it's probably not a feature that you're going to want to use because it, I don't know, it, it, it's just easier to press the button most of the time. <laughs> it's easier to just push the button to talk instead of dealing with all of the, the setup and the first part of your transmission getting cut off and the, the delay, just it's just easier press to push the button. the button. Just press the button. <laughs> now, I'm not saying there aren't some uses that are perfect for Vox. I'm sure there are. Some people mm -hmm. are using it with lots of success and loving it. Probably. I haven't ever heard from any of those people. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I'm running the two-way radio store, the people that I would hear from are the ones that are are not having success with it and they're looking for alternatives or a better way to do it. So maybe selectively, mm -hmm. uh, you know, limiting my, my audience. So you, you yeah. may find something that, that uh, where it works well. And please let us know if you've got a yeah. case where Vox works well for you. I'd love to hear about it.